Fresh on the heels of our success from the previous video, now what we want to do is take a look at the Windows Phone 7 emulator. Uh, since we're going to be spending so much time in it for the next several days, I thought it made a lot of sense to become familiar with it and see how we can interact with it to simulate a user actually working with a physical phone. If you recall from the previous video, the emulator is there to not just simulate the phone, but it's actually the, uh, the operating system that's on the phone. So we're running a computer, in a sense, within our computer. Uh, at any rate, if you're already familiar with the Windows Phone 7, you have one already that you're playing around with and you enjoy, uh, this video might not be so beneficial to you, you might want to just skip it. But if you're like me and you want to, uh, to learn everything you can about the emulator, stick around. Let's start by looking at the Visual Studio IDE, where we left off from in the previous video. What we want to do now is uh, start debugging our application one more time so we can get back to our emulator. And as our application loads, um, we're going to pay attention to some of the buttons on the bottom. First of all, there's a back button and a start button. Uh, in some cases, these will take you back to the start page. If I click on the back button, notice behind the scenes here what happened was Visual Studio is no longer now linked to uh, our debugger. It kind of something changed whenever we hit the back button. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, if I were to hit the start button, nothing really changes because we're already on the start screen. So it might appear like uh, these two are doing the same thing, but in, uh, in fact they are not. Uh, we're going to see on day three that those are two distinct operations and that will become important as we begin to build applications that respond to user events from clicking the buttons at the bottom. What happens to your application when somebody hits the back button or the start button? Well, stay tuned on day three, we'll talk about it. So uh, what I want to do is hover my mouse cursor over to the upper right hand corner of the emulator and you can see a little menu pops open. I can close down the emulator altogether. I can uh, minimize it to our system tray. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it again. Uh, I can rotate the orientation of the phone as if somebody were moving it around by using this counterclockwise button and you can see how it changes the orientation and I can move it back using the clockwise movement button. Uh, and those will come in handy later on again in day three as we want to create applications that can respond to uh, movements so we can reorient our pages for the user. We're going to see an example of that in just a moment when we're working with Internet Explorer. Uh, I can expand to the normal size uh, our emulator and you can see it's quite large because of the number of pixels that are on a phone screen as opposed to the number of pixels that are on your computer screen. That's why it looks so much larger when you do that. I'm going to use the little um, uh, magnifying glass icon to zoom and I'm going to set the zoom level to 50 which is comfortable for my recording area here. Uh, feel free to pick whatever option makes most sense for you. Uh, I can also use this little handle to move the emulator around or as I did earlier just kind of pick a spot on the chrome, that little gray area that surrounds the main area that we've been working in. Now to simulate a user interacting with the phone, you use the mouse cursor uh, most of the time. So for example, when we go to Internet Explorer, uh, you can see that by default a home page pops up set by default to Microsoft.com, some search page. Um, what we can also do though is use our mouse cursor to click into the location bar at the top and when we do that a on-screen keyboard pops up that's called uh, an input scope and we're going to talk about those on day three as well you can choose different input scopes for the different types of information that you want a user to be able to enter into the phone in this case it's a simple QWERTY keyboard but there are some other options as well um, now what I could simply do is start typing in www dot and then type in a list uh, or you know the full URL. Now since we're working on a computer though it's more convenient to use our physical keyboard instead of the on-screen keyboard to type out and peck every little letter. So what you can use is the page up button on your keyboard and when you do that you'll notice that the on-screen keyboard disappears but we can continue to type um, using our physical keyboard and here I'm going to navigate to my own website. I know it's up and running I just want to see how it looks on the phone. Looks pretty good if I might say so myself. At any rate, uh, I can also use uh, some of the little uh, buttons here in what's called the application bar or the app bar. 
And we're going to be building applications that uh, use that app bar and put our own icons there and our own menu options in there. Uh, if you were to click the little ellipsis button, it'll expand that app bar into the full menu so that we can see all of the menu options that are available as well as the descriptions of each of the buttons that appear on the app bar that peek over just barely over um, uh, the, the bottom edge. So if I wanted to create a favorite I would just be able to just click that little plus with the star and I can click OK and now it's in our favorites list. If I want to see the list of favorites I can see the list here. Um, I can go uh, back. I can open up multiple browsers at the same time or rather multiple tabs at the same time. Uh, so I might use this one to pop open that default site and now I can see both pages load one, pop it back open and close the other one. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I think is really neat about the phone is the integration with search. When I click the search button, says do you want to uh, allow your phone to access your location so this is where uh, the emulator breaks down just a little bit clearly it doesn't have all of the um, of the, the physical hardware in it for GPS for example or the accelerometer uh, and uh, some of the other features like the buzzer uh, those just can't be implemented in a computer right or, or in the software alone they need some physical components so it's gonna lose some of its meaning here I'm gonna click the allow button and here I could ter uh, type in a search phrase into the Bing search window. I could also click this little microphone and be allowed to uh, speak a phrase and then it would do text to speech and hopefully get whatever we say right. Uh, of course in this case we don't have the microphone set up so it's not going to let us do that. Clicking the start button again though brings us back to the start page. I'm going to click the little arrow in the upper right hand corner. This will bring us to all the applications. Hey, there's our Hello World application. We could click it and launch it again here if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go to settings here at the bottom and talk about the last little piece of this that I want to address. And that is the themes. Uh, and a, a, uh, an important part of working with the phone is uh, the the aesthetic, the look and the feel of the applications that we build. And in most cases, uh, we're going to do one of two things. We're going to adopt the, the the color scheme that the user has chosen on this theme settings page right here. Or we're going to be building some highly customized, highly graphical in nature um, screens. Uh, and we may demonstrate how to integrate some of those background images into our applications a little bit later in this video series. But uh, I can choose one of two backgrounds, light or dark, and I can choose an accent color. And now from this point on, I have a white background and then all of the icons and the applications are themed to look like that. If we were to look at our Hello World application again, it's now themed uh, although we haven't used any accent colors, it's themed to look like the rest of the phone uh, selections by the user. And we're going to talk about how to use some of those built-in colors uh, within our own application so that it looks correct whenever our user is interacting with our applications. Again, that's a day three topic. All right, so that pretty much wraps up uh, everything that I wanted to talk about in this, uh, in this first um, look at the emulator. Uh, now we can feel confident in moving forward and discussing the Hello World application in a great deal of depth. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.